Geek Citadel. Welcome to Bullet Points, where I list what I liked and disliked about a game, so you can take my list, compile it with others, and see if you want to rent, buy, or watch the game on YouTube. The North Blades, flogged by war. The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. Geralt returns for his third and final adventure in the series. He's looking for his ward, Cirilla, who is being chased by the Wild Hunt, a group of vicious monsters who take no prisoners. He sets off on a quest with his Witcher companion to find Yennefer, the one person who may know where Ciri may have gone. Geralt soon discovers that Siriana isn't one to be easily tracked, and to find her, he'll have to get his hands dirty in a world full of unsavory individuals. Just want to talk. You deaf, Stray. No one here will talk to you. If it's company you seek, stick that mangy snout of yours in a trough with the pigs. <laughs> Show that shit eater, Micah. There are people screaming about downgrades and whatnot, but I can't help but consistently stop and look at the glorious sunset. I don't think I have ever seen a better weather system in a game. The wind howls and whips through the grass, bushes, and trees at ridiculous speeds. The rain can sprinkle, drizzle, or drench Garal and his surroundings, leaving wide puddles along the road. The time of day changes the shadows and the lighting, and a simple addition of a flickering candle can add new details to a character's facial structure. It's splendid, and I think CD Projekt did a fantastic job selling this beautiful but cold-hearted world. Garot has his own agenda in finding Ciri, but the world doesn't revolve around what our Witcher is doing. War is ripping up the landscape, and the civilians are suffering the worst for it. Bandits are tearing apart the countryside, and monsters are feasting on anyone they see. It's a bleak world that doesn't hold back in the least. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones or any harsh media, this game will pull you right in. Facing off against a combatant at the start of the game is slightly inflexible, as if Geralt doesn't quite understand the fundamentals of basic sword combat. After gaining a few ability points and equipping better gear, you start to understand that fighting isn't about mashing buttons to victory. You'll have to learn to dodge with precision, cast signs appropriately, and single out enemies for a clean kill. These tense combat scenarios make for a difficult and satisfying fighting system. So much to do in so little time. The Witcher 3 gives us hundreds of quests and random locations to discover. If you like to run off and explore the vastness of an area, this is a game that placates that desire in full. It has a crafting system, a card game, a meaty talent tree, and various useful in-game collectibles. Not to mention it supposedly has 30 plus endings to stumble around and discover. Yeah, good luck with that. The voice cast is fantastic in The Witcher. They sell these tortured and crude characters as if they actually lived in this world. Cut to your lungs plain as day. What am I beside ye? I just want to live. These days, streams are bereft. No fish for me to gulp. And they's given a sack of flour to the winner. Show some pity. Take a fall for me. I'm not going to lie when Robert Baratheon, I, I mean the Baron, told me his twisted little sob story. I felt a little sad for him. Even the random side characters have compelling and interesting tales to weave. By now, you should know that I love all things detective and games. Inspector Geralt has a hint of Sherlock Holmes and Wolverine in his blood. He can track scents, analyze crime scenes, and gather clues that will lead him to his prey. Bravo to this feature! I absolutely adore it and hope a Batman game takes notes and expands on it one of these days. Looks like rain. I'm going to quickly go through a few nitpicking issues I have with the game just to keep the video short. If you wish to see my full reasoning behind a nitpick, check out this review on GeekCitadel.com. And now for some nitpicking. Why is Garol flipping and twisting all over the place in a precision based game? What the hell is up with that stupid ass horse that keeps running around in circles or gets stuck on every goddamn thing every time I call him? How come Garok can't jump 5 feet without hurting himself? Pause. As I stated earlier, this is an incredibly bleak world in the vein of Game of Thrones. Every person in the world from the kings to the lowest peasant are figuratively assholes. The game also doesn't cater well to women, even if it has a playable female on certain levels. Let's just say that men don't have much respect for anything in this medieval world. I mean, they straight up call Geralt all sorts of mean things. 
I'll not drink with Weaver Lost freaks. I swear, behind that ponytail, I could see a man tear roll down his cheek. The Witcher 3 can be exceptionally gross with content like demon fetuses and bandits having open conversations about sexual assaults on young women. Let's keep going. Slow experience gain. Why does it take six hours to gain a level? Also, it double dips, so it's not that it's just slow experience gain. Any gear you get from whether you find it or craft it, you have to wait until you get to like level 17 to be able to use that gear to be some more monsters in the world. This isn't the strike at the Witcher, but why is item weight still in the game? When Garok can hold like 10 swords in his bag and then suddenly one more is too much and a horse just appears out of thin air when you call it, I think we're pretty much done with realism. Especially when he's not even wearing a bag. Why'd they make a big deal out of hair works when it always looks like Garot needs an extra spray of soul glow? I don't have anything against the soundtrack, I just don't have anything good to say about it either. It's in neutral territory here. Why do the civilians say the same dialogue for 40 hours of gameplay. I come back to a town, this lady is still talking about how her man got some peelings and another woman is still warning her against it. Why? Why are you still talking about this? You guys have nothing else to do with your lives. Wait, the work my mom's got, eh? Oh. As with most open world games, you're bound to run into a few issues. The Witcher 3 adds itself to this collection with some downright infuriating bug issues. I've crashed simply putting on new clothing, watched a man ride a horse on the ground, saw some floating horse tails, and got stuck under stairs. So far, the autosave has kept me from going into a rage, but it's still something you'll have to watch out for. Despite a ton of nitpicking, I've been playing The Witcher 3 for over 60 hours at the time of this review. The amount of detail that went into creating this world astounds me the more I explore it. I've spent a majority of my time hunting for treasure, snuffing out bandits and monsters, and helping out the various townsfolk. And I had to make a couple tough choices like letting some kids suffer a horrendous death or free some gross looking beast from his curse. They were all orphans. Was it worth it to save them at the expense of releasing an unknown power? Unlike this tough choice inside the game, Buying The Witcher 3 is an easy choice to make. If you're looking for a tough action RPG with an intricate storyline and a detailed world, Geralt's final trip is an absolute must play for fans and newcomers alike. For more Geek Citadel plays and reviews, check us out on YouTube, Dailymotion, and GeekCitadel.com. Also, for the PC lovers, join our group on Steam Curator. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.